Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how companies deal with their JavaScript code not being private. So let's get into it. So basically the question in question today was, Frederick, how like, how do we deal with this fact? Like when you go to any web page, you will be able to see all the code or the, you can inspect the source of that web page. So how can we deal with the fact that this is just public information basically when we're sending JavaScript and CSS and so forth? So I'm going to tell you something that may come as a bit of a shock to you and that the thing that is maybe a little bit shocking to you is that your CSS and your JavaScript and your HTML and so forth isn't really all that interesting to a lot of rival companies. What do I mean by that? Well, basically what I mean is that isn't that it's not hard for you to produce a responsive website with CSS, JavaScript and HTML and so forth. It's just that you can't really build, it, it's not really the interesting part of the system. The interesting part of the system is what it actually does. It's the value that this product provides through the logic that it has. It's um, it, the, the UI isn't really something that you can keep to yourself. And it's not really something that is, if, you're, if we're really honest, there, there are of course some products where this is, would, this is like the main thing. I mean, you could in theory plagiarize some of these products, but uh, it's uh, it, for the companies who actually make money from the UI layer of things, it's, they usually make money, they still make money even if someone might, well, could in theory steal their secrets or if they even have secrets, but they, you could copy basically this code. This is absolutely true. But it would take a lot of time to do so and you can't just blindly copy paste it right off the bat because that might get you in other sorts of troubles and so forth. But most companies, they, they don't really because it's, there's no real reason for you and you can't really keep your JavaScript and your CSS secret. So there's not, no re, not a po there's not no point in trying to achieve that goal. It's not going to happen. If somebody really wants to steal these assets from you, assets from you, they will. This is, uh, I, was, uh, I had a, a video where I kind of touched on the game industry having this problem and they are trying desperately and it's actually funny because quite a lot of the game industry is actually trying to enforce their their ownership and making sure that people are not actually pirating their games by having a network connection so have some type of server that you need to interact with in order to play the game and this is exactly the uh, th that's the core of it you can't deal as soon as you send the code to an external party you are in the dark you have no idea what they're doing they could be reverse engineering it and they could be stealing all your secrets but you're still in a situation where your business model is based on the fact that you actually need to send this code and i mean you're going to get paid for some of it you maybe not all of it but you will get paid so what do you do well the way that it's solved is that you ask the fundamental question, what is secret in my organization? What is information that I cannot share? Because if I were to share this information, it would harm my company. And some people in the open source industry, in, in, in open source and so forth claim that there is almost no such thing. There are still some things that I, I will touch on that as well. There are some things that you should have, should at no point ever, 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 ever share, even if you're using open source. But most will claim that there is this, what we call business logic that where you kind of, well, you kind of have to make a decision there. Either you're open source and everybody can see how you secretly solve something. An example of a secret business logic that might be very sensitive would be, let's say that, that you have an algorithm that does something very fancy. Let's say that it's a trading or a day trading algorithm or something like that, that trades stocks and how it does that exact thing. That's very sensitive information because that is pretty much how you are making money from 
the code that you have written. So quite a lot of companies wouldn't really want that to be public. And that's why you would never put that information in JavaScript. You would never send it to the client as part of the browser, browser's execution of your web page or whatever you have because it is secret information that should stay on the server. Now, other things that are extremely sensitive that you shouldn't even version control, things that you shouldn't even put on like Git or GitHub or like nothing like that is what we, well, we've been kind of, well, it's funny because we actually do refer to these as secrets. Things such as API keys, things such as passwords or credentials or anything like that that can give you access to some integration that you have or something like that. And these things, the, these things should never be version controlled because even if you were to, I mean, if you, if you version control them, then basically anybody who has access to your repository can find these, I mean, it's the equivalent of um, leak in a database or something like that where all the usernames and the passwords have been made public in some fashion. It's pretty much the equivalent of this. The tricky part when it comes to Git is that even if you remove your credentials today, you have you still have all the you have the commit history, which is another problem you need to deal with where you could in theory just go roll back through the versions until you find that magical commit where you actually added an API key to some integration you have somewhere. Maybe you're using Amazon or Google Cloud or Azure or something like that and you have some, well, worst case scenario, probably some type of service level account where you basically have a token, an API token that gives you access to your entire internal, well, your account and all of the services that you have, right? That would be a pretty serious leak, I would say, of security. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I want you to take away from this is that you deal with the fact that you can't keep your secrets in JavaScript and front and so forth. It doesn't just have to be JavaScript. It's basically any application that you send to a client by simply making sure that you know what's secret business logic and what is public information or things that aren't really risky to your company if somebody figures it out. Because the fact of the matter, guys, is that even if I know how you did something as a rival company, if I'm starting from scratch, it's still going to take me quite some time to just to catch up to you. So if you have invested in some big thing, you still have quite a head start on me. An example of something like this is Lego, the toy company, where they developed the block system many, many, many years ago, and then their their patent rights, you know, expired over at one point, and they had all these rivals that came into the market. Now they still have the value of their brand within their within their customers' ma mind. And the other companies, you know, they didn't just pass them because they started copying left and right what they were doing. They did, of course, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that they're just going to take over just because they're copying something. It is usually harder than just doing a pure copy of something to actually get something to get off the ground. So that's got to be my answer. Have a great day.